Hi everyone, it's the Chef Mazibugo speaking. We are going to do engineering science entry for report 191 and we are going to take module 3 which are forces. We are going to use two books, the one by G. Olivia and the one by R. P. Malby. And the previous question paper will be the one for July 2015. Let's start with the definitions. Here we are going to define force using the four effect of force on an object. Force is the influence which can make a stationary object to move, change direction, shape, and size, and it can stop that moving object. Force is a vector because it's got a magnitude and the direction. Equilibrium. If a body remains at rest when a number of forces act upon it, then those forces are in equilibrium. And the resultant force is that single force that can replace two or more forces and still have the same effect. The equilibrium is a single force which will balance the system of forces and it is also a force that is opposite and equal to the resultant force. The triangle of forces. If the forces acting on a point are in equilibrium, then they can be represented in magnitude and direction by the sides of the triangle. Let's take the workout for polygons of forces. This workout is from the book by G. Olivia, exercise 3.1, we took 1B. Here we have to calculate the magnitude of the horizontal and the vertical component. And you are given the 50 Newton force, which we are going to take it as a resultant force or as our hypotenuse side. And you are given this angle, which is equals to 140 degrees. Now we have to do construction so that we can have the force on the horizontal plane and the force on this vertical line. We can use two methods in order to do the construction. The first one, we can use the direction of the 50 Newton force, which is west of north. So that means that from where 50 Newton started, we'll construct the force that will take a west direction, and where it ends will join with the force that will be taking a north direction. So now we'll be having the horizontal force and the vertical force. The second method, you can use the head to tail method. You can take your 50 Newton as your resultant force. So you need to have the force that will start where this resultant force started towards its direction. So it means it will be towards west. Then where it ends, you will join another line and ends where the 50 Newton force ends. So now we have the horizontal and the vertical lines. This vertical, this vertical line will be your vertical component and this horizontal line will be your horizontal component. So now we need to get the magnitude of this unknown angle. This angle together with 140, they are lying on our straight line. So they are equal to 180. In order to get the magnitude of this angle, we'll subtract 140 degrees from 180, then we'll get 40 degrees. So it means this angle is equal to 40 degrees. Then now we have to get the magnitude of this force, this vertical component, which is opposite to 40 degrees, and we have to get the magnitude of this horizontal component, which is adjacent to 40 degrees. We are going to use the trig ratios. We'll check the trig ratio that we'll use opposite and hypotenuse. And that trig ratio will be the sine of theta. So the magnitude of this vertical component will be 15, the sine of 40. And again, for this horizontal component, we'll check the trig ratio that we'll use adjacent and hypotenuse 
and that truth ratio will be the cos of theta. So the magnitude of this horizontal component will be 15, the cos of 40. So the magnitude of the horizontal component will be 15, the cos of 40 degrees. So it will be equal to 11.491 Newton. And for the vertical component, it will be equal to 15, the sine of 40 degrees, which will be equal to 9.642 Newton. In forces, you can use the Cartesian plane and take those forces that are moving towards north as positive, towards east as, ne as positive, south as negative, and towards west as negative. Let's take the workout from the new book, which is the one for RP Malpi, exercise 3.17. Here we have to reduce the horizontal and the vertical components. And we are given the following forces. We have 400 kilonewton force towards north, exactly towards north, which means it is our vertical component. And again, we are given the 200 kilonewton force, which is exactly towards east. These two forces, we are going to call them the independent forces because we are not going to do any construction to them but we'll use them as they are. We'll use 400 kilonewton as our vertical component and the 200 kilonewton as our horizontal component. We're also given this force which is in west of south that is 250 kilonewton and this 350 newton, kilonewton force that is on our east of south. So now we have to do the construction to these forces. To construct on this side, we'll use the east direction. So it means we need to have the horizontal force that will move towards west, then the vertical that will move towards south. And on this side, we'll have the force moving towards east, then the other one, that will be our vertical component that will move towards south. So now we have to get their magnitudes. On this side, you will have the hypotenuse side and the angle of 45. So the vertical component will be your opposite side. So that means you will need the trick ratio that will use opposite and hypotenuse. So the magnitude of this side will be 250 kilonewton, the cos, sorry, the sine of 45. And for this one, which is the horizontal component, this side is adjacent to 45. Then the trick ratio will be cos of theta, which means the magnitude of this horizontal component will be 250, the cos of 45. And on this side, we've got this horizontal component which is adjacent to 30 degrees. And the magnitude of this horizontal component will be 350, the cos of 30 degrees. And for this vertical component, which is the opposite side, the magnitude will be 350, the sine of 30. So now we need to get the sum of the vertical components. So if you check your diagram, you've got the 400 kilonewton force towards north and these two forces towards south. So from 400 kilonewton force, we're going to separate these two forces towards south. So it will be 400 minus the two forces, we'll add them because they are moving towards the same direction. So it will be minus 250, the sine of 45, which will be this force, plus 350, the sine of 30, which will be this force. So you'll punch your calculator and get the magnitude of the sum of vertical component equals to 48.23 kilonewton. And here, if you are reducing the forces, you have to state their direction. The direction will be towards the bigger force, 
So it means this will be towards north. So it will be 48.23 kN north. And for the horizontal component, we've got two forces towards east, which is 200. Then we'll add 350, the cos of 30, which will be this force. Then we'll subtract the opposing force, which is 250, the cos of 45, which will be this force. Then you'll punch your calculator and get the magnitude of the sum of horizontal component as 326.33 kN towards west. That will be your direction. And if you were asked to calculate the resultant from the above information, we are going to use the theorem of Pythagoras. Your resultant, which will be your R squared, will be equals to your sum of vertical component, which will stand for the Y squared plus the sum of the horizontal component, which will be your X squared. Then in order to get your R, it will be a square root of 48.33 squared plus 326.33 squared. So, the magnitude of your resultant force will be 329.89 kN. Because a resultant force is a force, so it means you need to determine or to get its direction. You can use the tan of theta, which will be the change in y over the change in x. And substitute the y's, which will be 48.33 squared, and the axis will be 326.332 and get the angle which will give you the direction of your resultant. Let's come to the roof trusses. This is from the book by G. Olivia, exercise 3.2, number 2. Here we are given this diagram with the force that is going down which is equal to 5 kN, and the two forces that are going up, which are equal to 2.5 kN each. So it means here we use the second law of moment that deals with the forces going down being equal to the forces going up. So that means that even if you are not given these forces that are going, the magnitude of these forces going up, you can get it from the force that is going down. If your base angles are equal, then it means even your forces going up will be equal. So it means if you are not given their magnitude, you'll just divide 5 kN by 2. Then you'll get the magnitude of your forces going up. Then now, here we have to get the magnitude of the unknown sides. So how would you know that those sides are unknown sides or which sides are unknown sides? You need to divide this roof trussel into two equal parts and name your triangles. So it means you will have two identical triangles and you have to name their sides. How do we name the sides of the triangles? You will take these two forces and construct them here such that you will have this part of a triangle and this part of a triangle. I've done that here. So if you look at this part, your diagonal line, it got an A, so it hold it by A. So I'll just put A here at the tip. And your D, it's opposite to your angle. I'll put it at the back opposite of my angle and C is holding the horizontal line then I'll put C here so now you've got a triangle ADC so this AC will be equal to 2.5 kN because that side this side will be the side of the force that is going up and this part 
we've got B holding the diagonal side and D again is the front opposite of 30 degree we'll put it at the back opposite then C is holding the horizontal line so now BC will be equal to 2.5 kilonewton because we've took this force and construct it here so now it means we've got two unknown sides per triangle we've got ad which is the diagonal line and dc which is the horizontal line and on this one we've got bd which is the diagonal line and cd which is the horizontal line so those forces will be our unknown forces and when we are calculating the magnitude of the forces in roof trusses, we state their nature. Those forces that lies on the diagonal line, we call them the struts, and those that lies on the horizontal line, we call them the ties. So now, how do we calculate the magnitude of the unknown sides? If you check this one, here you've got the hypotenuse side and you are given the opposite side. So you will check which trig ratio that is using opposite and the hypotenuse. Then you will get that it's a sine of theta. So here it will be our sine of 30 degrees. So sine of 30 will be equals to the opposite side that will be equals to 2.5 kilonewton, which is AC, over our unknown, which will be AD. Then we'll make AD the subject of the formula because it is our unknown. Then AD will be equal to 2.5 divided by the sine of 30 degrees. So the magnitude of AD will be 5 kilonewton, and we will state its nature as a strut because it lies on your diagonal line. Then for DC, DC will be our horizontal component and our adjacent side. So we'll check the trig ratio that we'll use adjacent and opposite. So DC will be 2.5 over the tan of 30. Because the trick ratio that we'll use opposite and adjacent will be tan theta. So now the magnitude of DC will be 4.330 kilonewton and its nature will be the time. Whatever that we've done here will be equals to this side of this angle. Because AD will be equal to BD and DC will be equal to CD. Remember, we've said these two triangles are identical. Let's continue with another workout from the new book by R.P. Malpi. We'll take exercise 3.2, number 3.2.1. We've got a structure of forces that are in equilibrium. We need to determine graphically or calculate the magnitude and the nature of members A, B, and A, C. We are not going to do it graphically, but we are going to calculate their magnitudes. Now, here you are given the force that is going down and two forces that are going up that are equal. This tells us that our base angles are also equal. So it means on our B, We'll still have 45. Then now, we have nothing on this side. So it means we're going to use this side to calculate AB and AC. So in order to do the calculation on this side, we'll take 150 and divide this roof trussel here. Then we'll have a triangle like this. So how are we going to name it? We've got A. On our diagonal line so it means on the tip here we'll have a 
and B will be front opposite to our angle of 45. So we'll put it at the back of our angle and C will be holding the horizontal line. So we are going to put C here. So now we'll have a 150 Newton, which will be equal to AC. And we'll have the two unknowns, which will be AB and BC. So now, how do we calculate AB, which is our hypotenuse side, if we are given the opposite side? Again, we are going to use the trig ratios. So it means it will be sine because it is the one that is using opposite and the hypotenuse side. And for AB, it will be 150 over the sine of 45. So your AB will be 212.13 Newton. And we'll state the nature. It lies on our diagonal line. So it means it is a strut. And for BC, again, we'll check the trick ratio that is using adjacent and opposite. And that will be, it can be cos and it can be tan. But I prefer you to do it taking tan because you use what you were given originally. But I've given you another option of using the course. You will have your hypotenuse side equals to 212.13 and you will have your opposite side that will be equals to 150. So you will have your BC equals to 212 times by the cos of 45. So your BC will be equals to 150 Newton and BC will be a tie because it lies on the horizontal line. Now, the roof trussels are our beams. As I've said, we use the law of moments. And again from here, we have to calculate the magnitude and the nature of forces of the members of the structure. Using the new book by R.P. Malpi, example 3.5. If you look at this diagram now, we have two forces going down. 20 kilonewton and 30 kilonewton and we have our supporters which will be R and L and we have given the distance between these two forces and we are given that this angle is equal to 60 degrees but we have to calculate the magnitude and the nature of the forces so it means we have to calculate the magnitude of these two supporters so we'll start by taking the moments at L and checking the forces that will take an anti-clockwise direction and the one that will take the clockwise direction towards L. If you check here, R will move the distance of 4 meters towards L and taking the side of the anti-clockwise. So you will have 4 times by R, which will be 4R. And there is no other force that will be taking the anti-clockwise direction towards L. So we'll say equals to, if you check the 20 kilonewton force, it will take the clockwise direction, but only 1 meter, because this force will divide this 2 meter into 2 equal parts. So it will be 20 times by 1. And for 30 kilonewton force, again it will take the clockwise direction towards L and it will divide these two again into two equal parts. So it will move this one and this two. So it will be plus 30 times by 3. So your R will be equals to 27.5 kilonewton. So the magnitude of this support R will be 27. 0.5 kilonewton. 
And in order to get the magnitude of L, we have to take the moment at R. So the moment at R, if you look at L, will take the clockwise direction towards R. So it will be 4 times by L because this L will move 4 meters towards R. So this will be equals to, if you check the 30 kilonewton force, we'll divide these two into two equal parts and take one meter towards R. So it will be 30 times by one plus, and for 20 kilonewton, again, it will divide these two into two equal parts and move this one meter, then two meter towards R. So it will be 20 times by 3 meters. So the magnitude of L will be 22.5 kilonewton. So this proves that the roof trusses are our beams. Let's take another workout from July 2015, 3.2. Here we have to calculate the value of L which will be this support. We can determine that graphically or calculate the magnitude and the nature of forces in the members PQ and PR. But we are going to do it by doing the calculation. So here, we are given this side as a, with the an angle of 55 degrees when we are given two forces going down these two forces, 35 and 12, and we're given one support that is equal to 35 kilonewton. You can get the magnitude of L by subtracting R, which is 35 kilonewton, from this 35 and 12. So it will be 35 plus 12 minus 35. So it means your L will be equal to 12 kilonewton. So now, we've answered question one to calculate the value of L, and we have to get the magnitude and the nature of forces in members PQ and PR. So it means we have to name our triangle now by taking Q, sorry, by taking L, and cut this triangle here so that you'll have this side as a triangle. So we'll have a triangle with R on our diagonal line and P at the back opposite of our angle and Q at the horizontal line. Can you please do that yourself so that you'll have your triangle and it will be easy for you to answer B because we've already done that. You will get that your RP or PR will be equals to 12 over the sine of 55. Why 12? Because your RP will be your hypotenuse side and you will have this side as your hypotenuse and this side as your opposite side and that is why we use the opposite as 12 kilonewton, and this side as the sine of 55. So your RP or PR will be equal to 14.649 kilonewton. And for PR, sorry, PQ, PQ will be lying here on the horizontal line adjacent to your angle, but you will have the hypotenuse side and the opposite side and again, you can use cos or you can use tan. So your PR will be 12 over cos of 45, sorry, 55 equals to 20.921 kilonewton. Naming or stating the nature of this site, your PR lies on the diagonal line. So it will be your strut and your PQ lies on your horizontal line and it will be your tie. Guys, I think you've got something 
of you understand something from what I've been showing you. Thank you for listening. This is the end of Module 3, which is forces. Take care. Goodbye.